My guest at this time is a legend in the world of pro wrestling journalism. He can now be read every month as part of the Inside the Ropes magazine. It is Bill Apter. Bill, my longtime friend, thank you very much for joining me to talk more well, for us. I have a longtime friend with me here, too. Oh, yeah? You have a longtime friend with you? Oh. We don't have licensing for you to be on the show here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all right. Hi, Nick. Love the show. Hi. Thanks, sir. And so does that make you Bert? Are you, are you? No, actually, I'm Bernie, his older brother. <laughs> Got it. Um, right. Well, Bill, a very exciting time for pro wrestling, and you well, are I, here. Can I just clear something up, by the way? Whatever you want. What do you want to say? Number one, I miss our podcast when we Thank did you. this. Yeah. You were my first one, so I've never forgotten you. You never forget your first. You never do. And the other thing is, for all you people who have been uh, jumping on me, saying that one of the Retribution members sounded a lot like me. I can't reveal anything about that. All right, you'll just have to keep watching. Um, but I, I can't come out with any statement, definitive statement right now, because someone may seek Retribution on me. Are you implying you might be behind Retribution, Bill? I'm not implying anything. Take it as any way. You know, you're a reporter. Sure, yeah. You're, you're a wrestling journalist. Yeah, but I have to talk about the real stuff that happens backstage. You never did that. My job's different than yours. Well, we did talk about the stuff that went on backstage. It wasn't, a lot of it was embellished, but we did talk about uh, back in the magazine days. Well, and that's, see, that's where I want to start. This was my pivot here, because I think it's very cool that you're back in the magazine game, Bill. I think it's just mm -hmm. cool that there's new pro wrestling magazines anywhere here. But like, so what was that like for you, Bill? Because you came up at a very different time. How was the magazine business different than the online pro wrestling journalism business we see today? Oh, well, we were uh, back in the day, back in the days of PWI and Inside Wrestling and The Wrestler and Sports Review. And that, I, I have a tickle here. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sports Review Wrestling uh, oh, and Strong and so many of them. Um, we were like the national a lot of times like the national Enquirer of pro wrestling right uh, people didn't want to buy the magazines to uh to read the real stories and even if we did those the promoter would get all pissy about it though you right. know why did you say something like that so we covered wrestling pro wrestling like i don't know the way the tickling and itching is going on here we uh covered pro wrestling right. as if we would have covered baseball or football or soccer or rugby or tiddlywinks we covered it like any other sport sure okay well but like in sports and stuff there's trades there's injuries i mean you say like if you found out somebody was like we're like you know found out somebody was working hurt and the promoter didn't want that out there i mean i'm sure there were a lot of times you knew things that you weren't allowed to talk about in the magazines because of like the way you did business at the time right well the, the reason we wouldn't have done what the promoter didn't want us to is we would have had our uh, press credentials revoked and told, uh, hey, Aptor or these other guys can't come into the building anymore. I mean, if you really look at it, it was their business and it was their rental of the arenas, whatever, and they could let whoever they wanted to in the house. Yeah. And they could also keep out whoever they wanted to sure. keep out of the house as well. But no, if there was an injury that someone sustained and was going to be out for a few months, we played that up. They loved it. I mean, well, they, they, yeah. they, the promoter loved that. Yeah, I guess I'm just saying, like, you know, if somebody's dealing with something, and then like they're they're working through it or something like that, it's going to affect their image. We've done that. We've yeah. done we did that in the magazine. Sure, we we talked about people uh, getting title shots when they felt uh, uh, they couldn't go on any longer, and then and they won the title that night. Sure, sure. Yes, okay. Drama. We 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 uh, we made. We embellished to make the fans sitting there reading this in their living room or on the toilet bowl, wherever they were reading this thing, to really be compelled to want to read what was going on. So what's it like for you then to get to see like the openness of the business right now? Because I haven't been in the business as long as you have, but I've been in the business here for you know the better yeah. part of a decade at this point. Yeah. And I remember when we didn't have press conferences we didn't have media scrums you know like you said i hate that word i hate the word scrum why i don't know it just sounds so dirty 
you know, we're having a scrum over there. Can you clean the scrum? Hey, wait a minute. Here comes one of the scrums. See, okay. I like the word scrum because I like being gritty. I like getting in there. I like making people feel uncomfortable. You know, no Tony Khan, tell me, tell me no about reaction. Brock Lesnar. Tell me about CM Punk. You know, I like that scrumminess. I'm, I'm a scrum. I, 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 to me, it's a press conference. That's what okay. I do. Okay, but it's very different, you know, the way things are handled. Well, how do you feel that the business has opened up to the press, or do you feel it's still very much the same? Because I, th I think a lot of people in the business right now would still say it's very much, don't piss anyone off. You could lose your credentials just like Right, that's my motto, is when people, uh, a lot of internet uh, people say to me, you know, why won't so-and-so let me in? Why does this one curse me out online? And I said, if you piss somebody off, they're going to have a bug up their butt for the rest of their lives about you. And it's not easy to get, uh, there's no hemorrhoid uh, cream to get that away. Sure. Well, okay. But see, Bill, you have like, of the, of the people in the business with sterling reputations, you have a very, very good reputation, Bill. And I don't Thank think you're you. that out of school, but is there somebody that you always kind of had to bite your lip and deal with because you knew the connection would help your business so hard? Was there anybody particularly tough? that you ever had to deal with in the business and kind of pulled back a little bit with? Well, any of the, the most of the promoters other than Jim Crockett yeah. and maybe Bill Watts, who, you know, was, would be very willing to uh, answer anything I wanted to give them. But like even Vince McMahon senior, who I knew really well, and he was great. He was a gentleman and all that. He never let me in really on any of the inside information. Willie Gilsenberg, his partner, did he'd call Stanley Weston, my boss, and Stanley Weston would tell me about it until Willie and I got to know each other a lot better. So, uh, but yeah, I the thing was I knew what to ask and what not to ask. You know, it, it was the it was no one to talk and no one to listen. Okay, it was a different era. And your question uh, about today with the business being so open uh, on onewrestlingvideo.com. Uh, the most views I've been getting recently are the segments that I'm doing that are coming from here, that are the old magazine style kayfabe. I'm making them up stories like why Brock Lesnar feel, felt like the bastard child when Paul Heyman took Roman Reigns in and how Paul Heyman got to Roman Reigns. Do you know how that happened? Please and if, fill me I'm in. I'm going to tell you if you didn't watch onewrestlingvideo.com, yeah. I'm going to give your your viewers here a chance to learn this. So okay. Paul Heyman, as you know, was a photographer yeah. for the wrestling magazines. Right. 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 And back in the those days when he was a photographer, he was with the Grand Wizard, Fred Blassie, Captain Lou Albano. Captain Lou Albano. Hmm, very interesting. He managed the Wild Samoans, Afa and Sika. Well, who is Sika's son? Roman. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. So Paul Heyman has kept his relationship through the years with Sika, and Sika always trusted him, as did Afa. Wow. So Sika got to his son and said, listen, do business with this guy. He can get you someplace. It doesn't matter what the fans do. The fans booed us. We made a million dollars. Go with this guy. So it was Sika who convinced who convinced his son to go with Paul Heyman. That was out of here. Wow. That's a great story, right? You're just a storyteller, Bill. Like that's, that's a, what you're, it is, right? You're, and they, you're, people you're, people loved it. We got a few thousand views on every one of them saying, Wow, after doing what he does best. And they love that thing. Yes, I'm a storyteller, but I also uh besides storytelling. I also, in my book, is wrestling fixed, Nick? Uh, I, I didn't know it was broken. Okay, but in my book, there are a lot of stories in there that I tell that are factual and things that happened backstage, like my time with the Von Erichs, where Fritz Von Erich was going to kill me, I thought, uh, and Randy Macho Man Savage, oh, you yeah, wanted to kill Bill after. <laughs> um, so I do those too, but I find that fans like to go back to that nostalgic time and relive the days of the magazines, which brings me to the phone call that I got from uh, uh, James Dixon and um, Kenny McIntosh from Inside yep. the Ropes, yep. that global brand, their podcast, mm -hmm. uh, saying they're going to start a wrestling magazine, and they wanted to know if I wanted to be involved. Hang on, there's no tickle now. 
<laughs> no, just that's fine. We'll take a moment here while you're while you're tickling your throat. I want to throw up Mom, the cover here of the inside the magazine. So, Michael, if you could throw up the inside the ropes magazine cover, Bill. Go no, ahead. don't throw it up, Michael. It don't it don't consume it. Make a puke sound effect, Michael. When we yes, but here it is. Go ahead. So that first issue, um, I have a column in it about how I got into the, uh, and the column, of course, is called the After Chat, right? Um, which is my stamp the past few years. Sure. And um, uh, the first column is about my history in the wrestling magazines. Yeah, good. So if people go to uh, um, insidetheropesmagazine.com, they can find out more about it. And the full cover, as you can see, is the Nature Boy Ric Flair and an exclusive interview that, um, that was done with him. So I'm excited about this because this is the first new I mean, there were thousands, hundreds of magazines out there, not just from the company that I work for, but uh, the Japanese magazines. There were dozens of those, and I think there's one existing now. Yeah. PWI is still around. Um, uh, gosh, I think Germany may still have one, but this is now a new one out of the gate, and it's going to be, uh, you can get it digitally, and it'll all, there'll also be print copies, and the, I know they're trying to work something out hopefully to get it uh, here into the United States as well. But if not, you can get it digitally. Yeah. Well, a lot of those magazines became, you know, websites, I think is what happened there, right? Yeah. But yeah. With you, with yeah. you, with you pinning uh, work for this magazine inside the ropes now, is this an after mag? Is inside the ropes it's an after, an after mag? mag? It's not an after mag. I am part of it. Okay. Um, I will be, um, uh, I'll be in charge of a uh, special, uh, operations manager okay. there but it's not i'm not putting the magazine together or anything i'm not involved in so you have to be running it for it to be an after mag Is that yeah exactly mean? and i I'm, I'm not really running it you know when i was with fighting spirit magazine i had a lot of uh say in that and total wrestling as well and okay. wow magazine and uh tutto wrestling from italy um and of course the pwi family i had quite a bit of say in that as well but i was never the publisher and I was never the main guy at any of those magazines because that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to sit up, bless people like Stu Sachs, who just retired, right. who was the editor of all our magazines for so many years, and Peter King before that, and you know, who could sit there and do the right words and the wrong words and edit us all. And uh, uh, I never wanted to do that. I wanted to be the guy out there. You know, I'm, I'm going to say something that I don't think I've said on any show is that I started off, as you know, wanting to be an entertainer. And I was a huge wrestling fan. The way that I got into entertainment is that the wrestling promoters back in the 70s and 80s and 90s started putting me on TV. So I got that satisfaction out of being a performer. Yeah. And then I opened up to should, what I can sing. I can do this and all that. But basically, like the all the, never caught, the singing never caught on like your witty banter. But I, I applaud you for, for continuing. Well, only because I, I, I never really pushed it until the last few years. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And because of YouTube, you can't really do the singing thing because everything's copyright. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. You're great, man. I have a blast with you at karaoke. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. I mean, most you know. people, that's all right. You laugh at my serious karaoke? Gee. I'm not laughing at your karaoke. You, you're a songster. You're a I thought you just said you laugh at my karaoke. I think I said I, I like going out for karaoke with you. Oh, oh okay. All right. well, I thought I was wrong. But to be honest with you, the, uh, the promoters uh, always like the Bill After Reporter. Right. When I did all those segments on pro wrestling this week for Joe Petticino and the great things where Jim Crockett let me uh, be on TBS like every two weeks doing segments with Flair and Dusty. They wanted that reporter guy. So when I go to conventions and they have entertainment and I get up there and I sing and do stuff, people never knew I did that stuff. I know. Yeah. yeah. You were brilliant. I have to tell you at StarCast, <laughs> when Jerry Lawler, me, and Dutch Mantel, uh, uh, thanks to Conrad Thompson, he let us do this, um, you were absolutely brilliant in the tribute to Andy Kaufman as Tony Clifton. Yeah, yeah, it's still it's still a little weird to me to 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 reference how I I was Tony there. A lot of people, I mean, I feel like I'm giving. Scary. I mean, I feel like I was giving. I feel like I'm giving it away though when I say that I was Tony. Oh. I'm violating that that. Well, you are in my mind. You know? 
in my mind, you were telling me, but okay. you you people can go to Fight TV yeah. and just put in uh, a tribute to uh, to Andy Kaufman. Well, uh, as as a as a as a kid, here's the thing, Bill. Like as I listen to you, we you, we could go another half an hour right now, no question. We can go another two I, days, I, I all day long. But like I listen to your story, and my story is very similar. I moved to Chicago to do comedy, met the wrestlers, fell into wrestling, and then you know, boom, shabam, here I am, right, doing a lot of what you did. Boom, shabam, here I am. I like that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because I also like to be out in the field. You know, yeah. I'll do the manager stuff because it's you know it's good and it helps everything. But I like to be out there asking the questions just like you did. And uh, uh, oh, I had somewhere I was going. Oh, Andy Kaufman, right? So like the thing about this is like wait a minute, I'm Kaufman. I'm a New Yorker. Kaufman. Kaufman. The thing about this Let's with see Andy, if I have my New York hat here. I don't. Andy had it, look. There's the Andy painting here. Where is it? Is it is yeah, the, with the neck brace. I see it. Yeah, there he's over there. Like yeah. Andy has left an indelible mark on my life, and you know to be in that moment with you and Dutch, and then Jerry Lawler, and I'm oh. crooning, and I'm crooning, and I've got the full thing on, and then yeah. Jerry, Jerry picks me up by the pants and like throws me out the door. There's the moment where I'm like by myself in the hallway walking and like slowly kind of coming out of the character and i'm just like wow what the hell just happened you know this is very bizarre for me yeah but yeah. you you real quickly uh we're the one that's like responsible for andy kaufman and pro wrestling which takes everything to a whole nother level Bill. well if you watch the wwe network's got uh debuted a few days ago the uh broken skull sessions with stone cold and he had jerry lawler on okay. and jerry does mention that i was the catalyst who got him together with uh andy kaufman I didn't yeah, know so that. I, did, you, I introduced them, and there's a whole chapter in my. Where's the book? There's there's a cover picture. No, I got it right here. Okay. There's a cover picture of Andy and I right there. Yep. Um, I but see. I was the catalyst who introduced them, and then it was the brilliance of uh, Andy, Jerry Lawler, Jerry Jarrett, and uh, Jimmy Hart and Dutch Mantel, and the people that put that whole thing together. And uh, wow. Yeah, it was the first shot, in my opinion, it was the first shot of sports entertainment ever. Man, yeah. And, you know, and sports entertainment, of course, is like, that was not really Vince McMahon Sr.'s bag, because he was more sports. No. Sports entertainment was junior, right? You have another Correct. story you told me off the record recently, I didn't know if you'd want to share here, about an interaction you had with Vince Jr., uh, that involved Evil Knievel. I don't know if you want to tell the Snake Canyon jump story. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's no reason why not to. Sure. Um... Vince was working for uh, Bob Arum at uh, at Top Rank, and there's not that much to this story. I don't know if you have it confused with another story. No, I just I love this story because of the the power dynamic because of you and Vince Jr. Well, they they were running the Evil Knievel Snake Canyon jump, and I had asked Bob Arum because we also did boxing magazines right. how I can get to see that on closed circuit without paying for it, of course, to cover it even though we weren't going to cover it. So I said, well, talk to my uh, my new right-hand guy. I said, who's that? He says, Vince McMahon Jr., have you ever heard of him? I was like, have I ever heard of him? I said, I'm... So uh, I called Vince and said, well, what can I do for you, Bill? I said, well, can I get, you need free tickets to the, uh, to the paper? I said, yeah, and he took care of it for me. Yeah. I just love, I just love Vince McMahon Jr. PR rep having to deal with Bill Apter and like, he's taking care of you, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. There are some other Vince McMahon stories, junior that I never told anybody. And there's not going to be a second version of my book. Well, then so, tell one here. What's it, what's uh, a Vince uh, Jr. Story? Uh, eventually, eventually they'll, they'll come out. Well, we got, we got a moment here. Pluck one out of thin air. What's uh, dazzle us here. What's a Vince Jr. Story. Well, Vince one, Jr. one of them was when I was in Chicago your hometown right here and the wwf was in chicago and uh all the magazines at that point the newsstand magazines had been banned and i understood it it was a decision by vince mcmahon that they had a magazine i didn't want they offered me a job i didn't want to be part of it vince, i was loyal to the company vince jr or vince senior vince vince junior. junior okay junior. so me being around the wrestling people uh, was kind of taboo. Time out, time out, time out. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. So Vince Jr. and I, he offered you a job writing WWS magazine, but you turned it correct, down. Correct, correct. Oh. When they were first doing it called Victory Magazine. Oh. Yes. Oh. There's another story about that we'll talk about another time. Okay, great. So great. Now, I'm, now I'm in Chicago okay. uh, during the height of the ban, and uh, 
I'm working for WOW magazine. So we figured uh, Tim Toe, who was one of the uh, other editors in LA from, said, let's go hang out at the hotel. So we go hang out at the hotel, all the wrestlers are in the dining room there. And somebody said, Vince is in the, uh, in the banquet room with uh, Linda, his wife, and a couple of other people uh, just hanging out. So I figured, you know what? I said, leave me, don't come with me, just leave me alone. So I waited outside the, the banquet room and I, I didn't want to uh, knock on the door or anything. And Vince comes out, looked huge. My God. I said, hello, Vince. Bill after. He says, oh, Bill, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> I said, well, I don't have a camera. I, <laughs> and he looked at me very seriously. He said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I work for a magazine company here in Chicago, even though I'm still living. Well, what? what well, why are you here? I said, well, I heard you were in the ballroom here and I wanted to say hello. Okay, hello, have a nice evening. <laughs> Struggled right away, that was it. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't, yeah. I mean, does, so was, was there heat when you told him that you, weren't, you didn't want to write his magazine? Was he upset with you? No, not that? at all. Okay. No, he wanted me as the editor yeah. um, of the original magazine. I told him I was, you know, loyal. And then there was another offer several years later, later that I also, uh, turned down because I was working for Stanley Weston. Had I not been working for Stanley Weston, I probably would have taken the, the job. Man, what a different timeline that would have been. We wouldn't Oh, be totally. But these are stories I haven't told. And people say, you know, write a second book about this. But they're stories that are great for me to tell like this. And people hear my voice on the, uh, on, not on, just on the audio of the book, but when they're reading it, they tell me they can hear my voice. But I don't know what I want to do with these stories here. So I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah, man, yeah. that's crazy. Well, you know, and you, you've watched this business like transform so much, Bill, obviously. And like, I don't have a ton of time left with you here. And obviously we'll have you back and we can talk more. more. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love being on here with you. Yeah, I know. But, uh, wait, we, it says here that we're supposed to be on now on zoom. Are we, have you started taping yet? We are, we are taping. We've been taping. Oh my God. A race. I'm not, I never wanted anyone to know about all this. I'm short on time and this is how we fill it. Great. Um, no, I wanted to ask you, you know, Tony Khan, right? Like you've had a year or so like the rest of us to watch AEW come to form and AEW yeah. and for Tony to kind of grow into this role of pro wrestling promoter. How do you grade Tony Khan as a wrestling promoter after his first year. How do you feel he's doing in that role? Oh, I think he's doing great. I mean, he, he even though he's out there at the scrums yeah. and everything, he's not out there all the time. He, I think he's comfortable enough to let the boys run their show, and he handles most of the office stuff, yeah. so to say. The, the rest of it. No, I, I, I think good because I think he – I you know, I know they talk to him about what they're going to do and all this – but I think he trusts um, the uh, the elite to know how to run the wrestling part of the business. A lot of people who come along in wrestling and want to be promoters are what they call money marks. And he's got a lot of money and he used it for this company, but he's not like the usual quote unquote money marks. He's really sincerely interested in being who he is and not being the guy out in the forefront. He wants his wrestlers to be out there and make a successful product. And he's yeah. done really, really well in his, in his role. And he's a very pleasant person as well. He's not intimidating. And, and that's the thing is I really like, I like Tony too, like personally, right? Like he's a cool dude. He's about my age. Like he's very nice. I agree with you. He puts a lot of the wrestlers up front. He hides himself in the back, but then yeah. like, you know, we see stuff like on Saturday night, with that Matt Hardy incident where I think a lot of people had questions and kind of, you know, wonder whose, whose ship or whose hand was on the, the ship's wheel. What did you think about kind of what was going on with that Matt Hardy situation that happened? Well, I did an editorial on one wrestling and uh, I think it should have been stopped at that point. That's my personal opinion. There's some people who say, go on, go on. I know uh, uh, Matt's wife uh, was beside herself, but Matt is that ultimate pro of course where the show must go on you know you could break every bone in your body and have a brain aneurysm but let's find some way to continue the show right um, if it were me uh i probably would have uh, stopped it and said that he's been hurt this match uh, officially did not take place and when matt hardy 
is ready to come back, we will have this match again on dynamite or somewhere else with the same stipulation. Yeah, I guess it's just weird because, right? Because, like, if Matt lost, he had to like leave the company, right? And, like, that's the thing is, like, I, I felt, you know, because I guess I've been around in the indies and stuff where I've seen guys, you know, follow through on matches just because they don't, they want to see a stipulation pay off. You kind of get that fog of war kind of, you just see red and you want to see it through. Uh, I just, I, I worried a little bit about that. I don't know. Well, I, I do too, but uh, again, Tony Khan was in a position where I've never, been in a position like this, we don't know what was going on backstage with the other people that run AEW. So everybody was probably scrambling with, you know, that quick thought, what are we going to do? What are we gonna do? And it could go wrong, it could go right. I mean, it, it's just, it's that split second decision of something that you never thought would happen. Yeah. Um, well, lastly here, Bill, as we're talking AEW and WWE, um, Let's let's take a little down the road here. You know, five ten years. Uh, AEW's like two to one on WWE when it comes to like that key demo. A lot of the times, most weeks. Do you see them as somebody continuing to climb the ranks? How tight does this get? Is this something where if you're Vince? Oh, I don't. It's it, it's hard. So hard to predict that. I mean, as long as they keep their TV spot and they have compelling television, they're going to keep going. They have to keep their product fresh. Yeah, that's that's a key to this is keeping the product fresh and not just for, oh, look who they got from WWE. But I love the fact that they're bringing in people like Eddie Kingston and, you know, all the the indie challenges. I thought that was brilliant. I really, really like that because they, they grabbed a hold of the indie fans. Yeah. But WWE, if they're getting the older fans, they need a way to keep them as well. So that's also a key demo. To me, nobody really caters to the fan in my age group or 20 years younger than me. They're all looking to grab that younger key demo. But people in my age group spend money too. And we buy product and we collect. So I wish there was more. I have pitched many times to the WWE and other places to let me take all those hundreds of interviews I have with all the people from the seventies and eighties and let's use those for a podcast. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or, or more, or more archival stuff, right? Because you can sure. take those. Absolutely. Yeah. Sit Absolutely. Down. I could see you, you pour yourself a little uh, man of Shevitz, you throw. No, them. no, no, no. I hate, I know, I hate anything alcohol based. You know, my drink, sparkling ice. I know it is. I know. I know. That's but that's I, my drink. I I can't. St I don't like. I don't. I don't like wine. I don't like beer. You know what I used to hate about beer? When I shot matches at the small clubs, the fans would throw beer at the ring, and I'd be shooting pictures, and it never hit the wrestlers. And I'd go home on the subway, smelling like a vat of beer, and I hated it. But no, sparkling ice is my uh, my brew. Okay, fine. Why, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now we're getting into terror. Why did you pick Manischewitz? Well, I thought that when one time, one time when I would, when I came to your house and I was like, you know, uh, um, I was looking to have a beer. Uh, right. What you had in your fridge. We did, right. We had Manischewitz because it was Passover. Yeah, you, you said something about how like this is the closest I'll ever get to, 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 to alcohol is like a little man. Right, right, because it was Passover. And I, you yeah. know what? During that time when the rest of my family has wine, I have grape juice. Yes. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go. See, that, I fake it. That was where the joke came from. There was some stuff there. No, I know. I know. I know. But I see I you there. I see you sitting there. You got your vinyl player. You put the 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 uh, the interview on. You I don't have back. a vinyl player. I have a vinyl player. You I don't. I I used to. No, I have my after Zally, I have all my karaoke yeah. equipment. You know that. Can I, can I tell everybody here right now? So this is your private karaoke room that you have built it's in. It's my singing room. It's not karaoke because I don't look at words. I use the orchestrations. I do not. I do not look at words because yeah. I used to sing in the Catskill Mountains and other places. So I never use the words. Man, I love that room. I, 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 I don't. You and, you and your your lady friend have yeah. been here, yeah. and I have uh, done a lot of uh, uh, songs for you. Do you have a little ceramic uh, Lexi Rose over here? 
I do. I miss her so much. Lexi Rose was my poodle who we lost about a year and a half ago, and I miss her so much. Man, we, yeah. we, we just dog sat for four days at my place. We had one of our friend's dogs here. Big dog, kind of Rottweiler collie dog. It's oh. A, it's a lot. Big dog. Big dog. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else down here grabbable before... Uh, what do you mean grabbable? I got grabbable stuff. You see this? And a gorilla mask. I got I got Okada bucks, right here. Oh. I got uh, I got my little Daniel Bryan action figure right here. I love how Bill and I are just flexing on what wrestling stuff we have at our desk. Oh, you know what? Oh, this isn't this isn't from you. This is this is from the ice cream. Oh, you got a tie. I have a funny tie. Here wait. My funny tie here. Here wait one second. I got a funny. Oh, I made him get up. So while you're watching this, please go and subscribe to www.onewrestlingvideo.com. That's www.onewrestlingvideo.com. I would appreciate it. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's very cool. That's very cool. I have here, and I'm going to be uh, running this stuff eventually on onewrestlingvideo.com. I have hundreds of uh, VHS tapes that I'm converting. Uh, I have... I have a lot of the library of IWCCW, sure. Mario Savoli's Federation, with me interviewing Honky Tonk Man and Rick Rude together as to who was the greatest intercontinental, intercontinental champion. I'm going to be running those on OneWrestlingVideo.com in the next few weeks. There you go. Okay. There it is. Yeah, all right. I got to I gotta, uh, get look. out of here. So shameless plug, my book is still available yeah. on uh, Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And hopefully in 2021... I'll be able to go and uh, do my one-man show and, uh, and book signings yeah. again. Yeah, 100%. All right, anything else, Bill? Are you done? Yeah, onewrestlingvideo.com. Please subscribe and go to Inside the Ropes magazine, um, dot com and, uh, yeah, and get the, get the first issue will be a collector's issue. Uh, 100%. I haven't seen it. I don't know what it's going to look like except for my column. They sent me a PDF, and it looked great. Awesome. All right. Well, you've got the outline here. You know how to close out the interview, right? I do. So uh, um, I've got to hit the yeah. So uh, I'm going to go toward the leave button, but I'm not going to leave yet. But I'll, we'll see you at the matches eventually. <laughs>